Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Are you truly interested in serving God? Let me say that another way. Are you truly committed to obeying God and fulfilling His purposes? A true believer, a real disciple of Messiah Yeshua, desires to obey God. They desire to hear from God for one primary reason, so they understand what is God's will. What does God want from me in order that they might fulfill that? So again, I ask you, are you truly interested in serving God? Take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Psalms and Psalm 119. Again, the book of Psalms and Psalm 119. Now, we're going to see in this section that the author of this psalm He is going to reveal principles that help us serve God, that encourage us and give us the knowledge so that we can demonstrate faithfulness to God. And again, that's what we are called to do, to manifest faithfulness to other people, that we might have a testimony that that shows others the character of God, which now through faith in our messiah that faith produces god's character in our life and it is seen by our decisions by our actions so let's begin look with me if you would to psalm 119 and we're going to begin with verse 145 again psalm 119 verse 145 The psalmist begins by saying, I have cried out with all my heart. Answer me, O Lord. Now, what he's seeking is a response from God. And that response, we might think of it as revelation. It is God illuminating things for one primary reason. And we'll see that in a moment, but that primary reason is to do the things of God, that we might hear from God so that we can properly obey Him, that we can correctly do what He wants us to do. So again, verse 145, I cry out with all my heart. And what do we want? He says here, answer me, O Lord. We want a response from God. In other words, We want to hear from him. We want to learn from him. We want to know his will. And what is hearing from God going to produce in our life? Notice his objective, why he's cried out to God, why he wants God to respond to him. He says, your statutes or your laws, I will keep. So notice His whole motivation from hearing from God, getting a response from God, is so that he can properly, accurately, correctly keep the instructions of God to demonstrate what are God's standards, his principles, his ordinances, his commandments. So again, we see a desire to obey God. I want to hear from God so that I can serve him better that I know exactly what his will is for my life. Move on to verse 146. It begins with that same word where he says, I've cried out, but here there's a suffix. It is that suffix for you. So he says, I've cried out unto you. And then he says, save me. And it's that word, Hoshea, And here, Hoshea means just that, to save me, 
deliver me provide for me victory but again why what does he want god's salvation to produce in his life where he tells us once more he says and i have kept your testimonies so notice here it's in because of the vav it's in what is called the hebrew imperfect how can we understand that usually the imperfect is simply the future tense in hebrew one of the things i want to caution you is this the imperfect in greek is not at all related or similar to the imperfect in hebrew it's very very different the imperfect in hebrew is simply another way of saying the future tense so here even though it's in the future because of that vav it changes it to the past or what new testament or old testament scholars would call the 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 perfect so he says here i have kept your testimonies now we see something else another principle he is coming to god and want god to move in his life he's not asking for a response from god audibly he wants to hear something that's not what he's saying he wants god to do what to save him to deliver him to move in his circumstances so that he demonstrates what is victory and how does he come before god he comes before him faithfully meaning this he says i have kept your testimonies meaning this i have demonstrated in the past my commitment to manifesting your character understand that there is an inherent relationship biblically speaking between the character of god and his testimonies his testimonies manifest his character so again he wants god to act to move to deliver him to save him and he does so why he has kept god's word in the past he has demonstrated manifested that character of god he says i have kept your testimonies so he has kind of built up a a testimony of faithfulness and he wants god to to move in his life so presumably he can continue in the same way now look at verse 147. now it's the hebrew word kidampti now this word usually means to move forward it's a word of progression but here most of the english translators and also i'm looking at a book and it's got this psalm in hebrew it's all the psalms but underneath it has a hebrew uh, more of a modern hebrew to help us understand it and there seems to be a consistency here where this phrase kidampti has to do with with rising up and he says i have have got up i have woken up but notice what it says here va neshef now neshef is a a hebrew word that that relates to the nighttime usually the early evening it's also a word that can relate to a a ball a prom some type of of celebration a dance which usually is very formal or for a specific purpose and he says here i have got up i have woken up when when it was still evening and he says what he wants now this is a a image of prayer he's gotten up when it's still nighttime is what is being relayed to us so he rises up very very early in the morning before the sun has come up and what does he want he wants god to to help him he says and i have prayed unto you this word for prayer is asking for assistance we have this word uh sia which has to do with with help so he says here uh i have raised rose up early before morning when it was still dark in the evening and and help me he wants god to act in a way he also says for your word i have hoped 
Now, what does he want? Again, he wants God to communicate with him. He wants God, and here's the interesting thing. This assistance, this help that he is seeking, he says, I'm hoping for your word. It tells us that the word of God is a source of assistance from God. What we need to experience many times in our life when we're having problems and hardships and difficulties, we need a word from the Lord meeting we need his instructions we need his counsel we need to know his will for us in this and therefore he says for your word i have hoped look now to verse 148 now here it is a a word remember i said this word in the root means to go forward it's it's about keeping your eyes forward and this is what he says look at verse 148 my eyes basically the implication is are are firmly set forward i am watching in other words with my eyes and notice we have this word ashmurot ashmurot has to do with night watches traditionally we know that there are four night watches from the the first three hours we'll say from six to nine then from 9 to 12, 12 to 3, and then 3 to 6. Those are the four night watches. And what he's saying here is this. My eyes are firmly fixed upon these night watches. Notice it's Ashmurot in the plural. And the implication here is these night watches, well, we need to understand them in two ways. There was literally a, a watch, meaning the city was guarded at night. They were concerned about the enemy perhaps coming, invading, attacking. And therefore, there was the night watch. People would be awake and guard the city watching, looking forward for perhaps that enemy might come. Well, here we're not talking about a a literal watching for the enemy, but this was also a time of prayer. So people would pray during these night watches. And what this one is saying is this my eyes are firmly six fixed to what night watches meaning he's praying throughout these watches and he says something more la siach which is to converse i believe a lot of bibles will translate this to meditate but it's it's a word of discussion it's a word of conversation so he says to discuss your word and so what we see here is this He's praying for an understanding of the Word of God. He wants to have greater clarity in regard to God's revelation. He wants to understand what God is saying to him through his Word. And we could understand this Word as simply the Scripture. Look now to verse 149. He says, My voice, hear. And he wants him to hear his voice, but it says, according to your grace O lord according to your judgments sustain me or renew me now this sustaining or renewing is a term of of life in that word for renewal or sustaining is the word life so he wants god to sustain his life to renew his wife life and notice that he says according to your grace and let me ask you what does god's grace produce see when we look at the this this psalm in the original language we see that that there is something parallel to the grace of god this term this word is related to which means according to your grace then we have according to your judgments now here's the takeaway for us what what the psalmist is saying is this god's grace works in my life not just to save me that's part of it god grace does save for by grace did you have been saved not of works so grace saves but that same grace that saves us also works in our life in order that our life comes into the judgment of god and what do i mean by that remember judgment it's not always this term judgment mishpat 
is not always a term of condemnation or punishment or judgment in that sense. It's also, this word judgment can be related to the evaluation of God, what God deems as right, proper, correct, accurate. So what he says is this. He says, look at this verse again. My voice here according to your grace. So be gracious. Hear my petition. Extend to me your grace. Why? So that my life can be in line with your your judgments, your evaluation, your understanding of the situation. So again, everything he's saying here is about this one walking in God's will, accomplishing God's purposes. That's what he longs for. And we have to ask ourselves a very important question. Does that describe you and me? Are we someone that definitely wants to be under God's authority and demonstrate the judgment of God, meaning what God judges and determines to be right? Do we want our lives to reflect that? That's what faithfulness is all about. Look now to to 150. Psalm 119, that same psalm, but verse 150, where he says here, Rod fe zima. Now, the word rod fe has to do with persecutors or those who are pursuing. But here the problem is this. They're not pursuing righteousness. They're not pursuing the will of God. It says, rod fe zima. Zima is an evil plan or a scheme. It's not usually used. A few times in the scripture it can be, but by and large, it usually is used in a negative sense as in this case. So he says, those who are pursuing, those who are committed to that which is a scandalous thing, that which is wrong, that which is improper, it says, they draw near, the implication is, they draw near to me. But notice what he says about these individuals who are pursuing that which is scandalous. He says, from your law, they have have gone far. They are far removed from the law of God. So we see a relationship here between those who are are pursuing that which is scandalous, that which is an evil plan, that which is displeasing to God, those individuals are far from the law of God. And remember, that word law has to do with instruction. They are far from the instructions of God. Verse 151, where he says, Karov, that means close are you, O Lord, and all your commandments are true now what is the relationship between these two sayings where he begins by saying Kurovata hashem close are you o lord and then he says all of your commandments are true it is when we believe that all the commandments of god are true true relevant and 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 has significance for us it is when we believe that 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 God is going to be close to us. But if you don't believe in the relevance of the commandments of God, then God's going to be far from you. So all of this reveals that the Lord is close to all who view the commandments of God, mitzvotecha, your commandments, as true. Let's conclude one last verse and we'll be done. It begins with the word kedem. Now, Kedem can mean long ago, or it can mean a former thing, or the first thing, the earliest thing. And what he says here is this. In the modern Hebrew, they translate the word Kedem with the word Rashid, meaning first, or the former. He says, first, and this could be like first and foremost, I have known you, I have known, excuse me, your testimonies what he's saying is this the priority of my life is to experience you oh god that's what comes first i want to experience you then he says for ever or we could translate because forever you have founded them 
these things that relate to the will of god the purposes of god the plans of god they are eternal what does that mean eternal because we see this word leolam leolam is a kingdom word it means forever for everlasting for eternity and anytime we come across the word olam we're speaking about something that has kingdom connection those things that are eternal those things that are lasting those things that that cannot stop they are eternal they are unshakable so he says kedem yadati meodecha which means first and we could say first and foremost i have known me edotecha i have known your testimonies i've experienced you i understand how you behave in this word world and therefore he says for or because forever you have founded them now this word for founding something can also be a word of of support so god is going to support he is going to to nourish those things that are kingdom connected those things that are kingdom committed so we have to ask ourselves a very important question does that describe you are you someone who wants god to move in your life first of all that he would speak to you that you would hear his counsel now a great way to to hear the counsel of god is just pick up the bible and read it but but also god can give words of knowledge he can give us of counsel a word for someone a word of encouragement a word of knowledge whatever it might be we need to be individuals that say this god whatever you reveal to me whatever i hear from you whatever your response is i wanted to produce greater obedience in my life i i want to have a greater testimony of your character being manifested through me see that's what it means to be created in the image of god that we're used to reflect the character of god the ways of god the purposes of god the plans of god and when we do that when we are committed to that type of behavior what's going to be the outcome we are going to frequently experience god now we might experience him through counsel we might experience him through through him acting in some way in our circumstances and such he might deliver us he might uh, cause us to overcome he might uh, provide something so that we can walk in faithfulness and obedience and and carrying out his purposes but be assured god is going to move if we're truly wanting to hear from him for the right reasons and what is the right reason we want to hear from god because we want to carry out his will so it goes back to what i've said numerous times and that is this god will lead you you will experience his guidance his his uh uh, providence in your life if you say to him sincerely god whatever you reveal to me whatever you teach me whatever you show me i am going to apply it to my life i'm going to demonstrate it i'm going to do it when we are doers of the word and not just hearers it is going to bring godly activity meaning his activity into our life if you are committed to his purposes if you want to submit to his will if you want to acknowledge to others and have a testimony that you are under his authority when those things are true in your life god is going to be active and that's what we want we want to have an active relationship with the living god well i'll close with that until next week may god bless you shalom from israel well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org again to find out more about us please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Shalom from Israel.